Okay, so if you've got a dog, you've probably seen it happen, that uh, that classic scoot across the floor. Like, let's scoot, yes. Exactly. It looks kind of funny sometimes, but, you know, it often means your dog's actually uncomfortable. Mm. Today we're going to unpack something maybe a bit uh, less talked about but super common, anal glands. Mm -hmm. We really want to clear up the confusion around this for everyone listening, whether you're, you know, a longtime dog owner or maybe even just starting out in veterinary studies. Yeah. Get the real scoop on what's going on back there. Yeah, it's important stuff. So basically all dogs have these two little sacs. Think pea sized maybe. Uh, they sit just inside on either side of the anus, um, kind of like at the four o'clock and eight o'clock spots, if you imagine a clock face. Got it. And these are the anal glands. Yeah. Their main job normally is to release just a few drops of this, well, this really distinctive, pretty foul smelling liquid when the dog poops. Ah, the calling card I've heard about. Exactly. That's a good way to put it. It's likely for marking territory. But interestingly, they can also um, let go involuntarily if a dog gets really startled or super stressed. Right. And that's when you suddenly smell that awful like fishy odor out of nowhere that's often it yeah mm -hmm. that's the glands expressing unexpectedly okay so that's how they're supposed to work but well what happens when things go wrong because it sounds like for some dogs this is a real recurring issue it definitely can be so the most common problem we see is something called impaction impaction yeah imagine those little glands have tiny tubes ducts leading out if the fluid inside, which is normally kind of oily, gets too thick, almost like uh, toothpaste, okay. it basically clogs up those little tubes. The glands can't empty themselves properly when the dog goes to the bathroom, so they get full, and that's really uncomfortable. I bet. And does it stop there? Well, it can, but if that impaction isn't dealt with, bacteria can get in there and start to multiply. That leads to an infection. Yeah, and then you might see, like, pus building up. The discharge could change color, maybe greenish or yellowish, and get even thicker. And if that's left untreated... It gets worse. It can become an abscess, which is basically a pocket of infection. It looks like a painful, red, swollen lump right next to the anus. Sometimes they even burst open. Oh, wow. That sounds serious. It's very painful. And you'd see pus, maybe even bloody discharge. It's also worth knowing, though it's much less common, that anal glands can sometimes develop cancerous tumors, especially in older dogs. Okay, that all sounds incredibly uncomfortable, even painful. So for us pet owners, what are the big red flags? Besides the scooting, what should we be watching for? Right, scooting is definitely number one. But also, look for lots of licking or biting back there. Around the tail, the anus, Sometimes they really go at it. Can that cause hair loss? Absolutely. You might see thinning hair or bald patches right around the base of the tail or near the anus. And that strong, fishy smell we mentioned, that's a huge clue. Also, notice if they seem to be straining or acting uncomfortable when they try to poop, or if they suddenly don't want to sit down properly or they cry out. Even just being generally lethargic or seeming painful can be linked. Mm -hmm. And of course, any visible swelling or redness back there is a definite sign something's up. So what makes some dogs you know, prone to this? Is it just luck of the draw or are there factors involved? Oh, there are definitely factors. Diet is a really big one. How so? Well, if a dog's on a low quality diet, especially one that's low in fiber, their stools might be too soft. Right. And soft stools don't provide enough pressure to naturally squeeze those glands empty during defecation. Mm. You need firm, bulky stools for that mechanism to work well. Obesity is another. Being overweight. Yeah, extra fat pads can actually get in the way and prevent the glands from emptying properly. And genetics, well, they play a role too. Certain breeds. It seems more common in some smaller breeds like uh, calves, cocker spaniels, chihuahuas. But honestly, any dog can have issues. Underlying things like skin conditions or allergies can also contribute, causing inflammation that affects the ducts. That makes sense. Okay, so an owner sees the signs, they head to the vet. What happens next? Right. And crucially, what should people not try doing themselves? Good question. So the vet will do an exam, and typically they'll manually express or empty the glands. That brings immediate relief if it's just impaction. Okay. If there's infection, they'll likely prescribe antibiotics, maybe oral ones, or sometimes a medicated ointment infused directly into the gland. Pain relief is important, too. If there's an abscess, it might need to be lanced and drained, sometimes under sedation. And the don't try this at home part. Yes. This is critical. Please, please do not try to express your dog's anal glands yourself unless your vet has specifically shown you how and told you to do it. Why not? You can cause serious damage if you don't know the proper technique. 
You could cause intense pain or even rupture the gland, which is a much bigger problem. Best left to the professionals. Keeping the area clean if there's irritation, maybe warm compresses, and using a cone to stop licking those are helpful things owners can do. Right. Okay. Good warning. So looking long term, how can we help prevent these issues from coming back again and again? Prevention often circles back to those contributing factors. Diet is key. Adding fiber can really help. Like what? A bit of plain canned pumpkin, not the pie filling, mm -hmm. or a specific fiber supplement recommended by your vet can bulk up the stool. That helps with natural expression. Makes sense. Keeping your dog at a healthy weight through diet and exercise is also crucial. Overweight dogs just struggle more with this. And for some dogs that have recurring problems despite everything, well, they might need regular routine expression done by a vet or a trained technician maybe every few weeks. Is surgery ever an option? Like removing them? It is, but it's usually considered a last resort. There can be complications like potential fecal incontinence, sometimes temporary, very rarely permanent. So it's a big decision. Yeah. It, you know, this raises an interesting thought. Yeah. Some researchers think those complex scents from the glands might have played an even more intricate role in dog social structures and recognizing individuals than we currently understand, more than just marking spots. Huh. That is fascinating. See, understanding even these uh, less glamorous ports of our dogs helps us notice problems early. And that makes such a difference to their comfort, their health. Absolutely. And just everyone remember, this discussion is purely for educational insight. It's so important. If you think your dog has an anal gland issue mm -hmm. or really any health concern, always. please always talk to your veterinarian. This chat isn't a substitute for professional medical advice or treatment. Getting help early really is key. Couldn't agree more. Early intervention changes outcomes.